Hi, everybody. Um, today, I'd like to walk you guys through immutability, um, what it is, and how you've already been using immutability, and how to get more use of immutability. So first, some thoughts. This is a, um, a quote from Eric Elliott, who is a known JavaScript developer. <laughs> I just found this blog on Medium. And it says, the true constant is change. Mutation hides change. Hidden change manifests chaos. Therefore, the wise embrace history. So change will inevitably happen in your life or in programming, but let's preserve the history of these changes. So first we start with JavaScript, and then I'll go into an application written in React um, and Redux. And then we can talk about how immutable JS works. So what is immutability? It refers to the way when you first instance a data structure. Um, after that, you really can't make changes to that data structure. So that's what immutability means. So if you do want to make a change to that structure, you want to make a copy of it and then make the changes on that copy. It's one of the core principles of functional programming. And we've definitely seen this before in JavaScript because our primitive data types are immutable. So a good example of this is uh, a string. So if, you, if I set a constant declaration to I'm immutable and then we slice that, your original declaration string is going to remain I'm immutable you can save the change copy in a different constant. And the same thing for numbers. However, in JavaScript, you have both immutable and mutable uh, data structures. Um, so that is um, our arrays. So if you start out with four elements in your array and you push five into it, you're effectively changing your original array. And same thing for objects. Arrays also have non-mutating um, array methods that kind of act as, as if your array was an immutable data structure. So when you do a map function on your array, you're returning a new array, as you guys all know. So why do we want this to happen? Well, if you want simpler programming, you want immutability. Because if you have a lot of different methods that are making changes to your data structure, you might lose track of what's making that change, and it's harder for you to debug um, what's happening in your data structure. Also, persistence, persistence becomes easier because you can keep track of your old objects or data structures as well as the new ones that you've created. Value, deep value comparisons are also easier because you can just compare the place in memory where these data structures are, because when you're creating a copy, you're creating a new data structure in your memory. So you can just compare where they are and see if they're the same or different. It also has some future potential for simplifying concurrency in JavaScript. All right, so what are some downsides to this? Well, that's easy to track, because it's going to be a little slower, because when you're creating a copy, um, you're copying the data over and over which will take more time. Also, it could be computationally challenging if your data is very large and it's complicated, like it's nested. Um, and it could take up more memory in your um, computer because you're saving older versions of your data structures. However, structural sharing will help with this. And what is structural sharing? So it's a method to build immutable persistent data structures and it's basically recycling the data that you don't need to update and just updating the data that really needs to be updated and then pointing those new data to the old data if it's related to it. So this is kind of hard to visualize, so we're going to go through a visual, visual visualization of a structure that's used in structural sharing, which is directive acyclic graphs. So this will be very uh, familiar to you guys. It's a try or tree. And it's storing a key value. And at each node, there is a value associated with the key. So um, say that we want to update the value of the node TEA, T. Um, we want to update the value of 3 to 14. So in order to do that, the nodes that you really need to make updates to or changes to are the nodes that are directly linked to that uh, leaf node. So instead of copying everything in this tree, we're going to just copy the green nodes and then point these nodes back to our old, old data. So you can see here that we're 
we only need to copy less than 50% of the nodes um, in the data structure, and therefore we're actually um, minimizing the time and the space that we need to create these immutable structures. All right, so let's move to JavaScript, um, especially how it works with Redux. Sorry, my slides are kind of off. Okay, so state in Redux um, should really use immutable states um, because we have multiple components that could make changes to the state property, so we want to keep track of that. So this might be really familiar to you guys. Um, this is a code from the senior enrichment that I wrote, and it involves making an interplanetary academy, and it, we have the ability to fetch all our campuses from the database as well as add a new campus to our database. Or, or to our state in this instance. So if we want to make a change, we always make a new um, state here by using object.assign and then make changes to that new state. And then we hook it up with our connect from Re React Redux and we're able to access that campuses property by using state.campusdata.campuses. And this is what prints out in the console when you add a an, uh, campus. I added campus Neptune and you get an array of objects. All right, so what's the problem here? So if we have a state that's very nested, you're going to be, have to be very intentional about copying everything inside uh, each level of your nested object. So you would have to use the spread property, or sometimes you might not update your state correctly. So this could be very tedious, depending on uh, your code. Um, you could have a very flattened um, data structure that makes it makes this very easy and maybe not a problem. But if you do have to make a nested state, it would be an issue. So how do we easily make this persistent immutable data structure? So if you really want to, you can keep defensive copying if that's easier for you, or you can use immutable JS. All right, so immutable JS is a library that was built by Facebook to work with React and it uses a structural sharing that we talked about earlier. And you could NPM install it and require it into your JavaScript file as you would any other uh, NPM module. And then this is the refactored code. So I'll walk you guys through it a little slower. Okay, so our initial state is nested as I said before. So this immutable dot from JS is going to convert the initial state as well as the nested objects and arrays into immutable um, data structures as well. It's going to go as deep as it needs to. And then if you are adding a campus here, you use dot .update. Or there's also dot .set. There's a lot of different functions that this immutable library comes with. But you can use dot .update and call the props on this initial state, which fetches those, um, that array. And then you can push in a new campus here like you would, but you first want to change your uh, object, a regular JavaScript object, into an immutable object as well. And then in your reducer, um, you're going to combine reducer as you did before, and then with, without immutable JS, you are able to just dot off of your state, but with immutable, you would have to use dot get in, and then pass it an array of properties on your state in order to get actual campuses. Or you can just dot off of the state dot get and then a property dot get and then property. And then you connect it like before. And then when you're rendering it, it's not going to be as simple anymore. It's, you can't just call it campus.name on it. You would have to do campus.get, um, getting another property on that uh, campus object. So to see this in action, um, this is my campuses. And we have planet campuses. We're going to add Sailor Neptune to this mix. All right, we submitted it, and we get <coughs> a map, which is an object in immutable.js. And inside that, we get um, our campus data object, which is a map, again. And then inside that, we have uh, our campuses list, which is an array in immutable.js. And now within that, we have a bunch of maps, which represent, each represent our campuses. So you see how like, the data is ac actually really protected um, instead of just being readily accessible by using dot and then a property. And we have Sailor Neptune. 
All right, so for more, I'm going to write a blog post on this more in detail because there's a lot of things that I didn't get to put into the slides. And then here's the resources. So hopefully it got you interested about using Immutable JS. Thank you.